Hi, and welcome back to the Effective Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Jackson. Today is episode 79, and we are looking at how important student prior knowledge is for learning. Well, I want to start by telling you that prior knowledge is the number one most important factor when it comes to student learning. Okay, I'll say it again, the number one most important factor is for you to know the prior knowledge of your students when it comes to learning. In fact, David Osville said that the most important single factor influencing learning is what the learner already knows. Ascertain this and then teach him accordingly. It is easier to build on existing knowledge than to learn new material from the beginning without actually having a connection to, to put with it, right? So identify this. You need to know what your students already know when you're creating units, when you're creating lesson plans, when you're teaching kids in your classroom, you need to find out what they know because it is the number one most important factor or largest influencer on what students can learn, right? In fact, there's some quote somewhere I'm sure I've, that I'm pretty sure I've seen where it basically says that you know, the biggest thing that influences what you can learn is what you already know. Okay, so you need to make sure you know this. So what do students need to already know? That's what I with the next point I want you to get to is if you're looking at creating some kind of lesson or unit and you're looking at the content that they have to learn, the new stuff, right? I want you to think, what is it that I'm presuming that these students already know to be teaching this to them? Or what do they already need to know in order to understand this, right? Identify what students need to know in order to learn that new information. You cannot just teach Newton's laws of physics, for example, if the students don't actually know what a force is, okay? They need to learn force, and then you can start to teach them about opposite and equal reacting forces and all that kind of stuff. Okay, you cannot teach kids how to read a book without them actually already knowing their letters, their sounds, morphemes, phonetics, right? There's so much that goes into reading. And if your students don't have the ability to read and you ask them to read something, they're not gonna get it. They're not gonna learn that, okay? So you need to have a look, what are the things that they already need to know? And not just need to know, all the things they already need to be able to do as well, right? There's those prior knowledge, but there's also prior skills that might be needed for what you're doing, okay? The next thing I want you to do, once you've identified the things that they need to know, right, is identify some common misunderstandings that you are going to need to overcome, okay? So maybe a student un thinks they know what force is and they have a misunderstanding of it that's quite common, okay? Or maybe if I'm getting them to read, maybe students haven't distinguished the sounds of F, so F and F, right? Uh, and that means that they're gonna to struggle to spell things. I'm gonna get them to write stuff and that they can't get that correct because they actually can't distinguish the sounds. Okay, it's kind of like a er and a, and a w, right? Students often don't distinguish those two sounds. And so I know that's a common misunderception, uh, misunderstanding. And so I'm gonna correct it before I even get into what's coming. Okay, uh, another one, if, if I think that my, if my students think that all the energy systems in the body function independently, that they don't overlap, okay? I can't then ask them to see how an athlete can play football and what energy systems are being used and how they relate, right? It's a very complex system. If the students haven't gotten the basics and understand that they actually are all connected, they can't then move forward with their understanding in that. So next, now that you've worked out what they need to know, you need to check, do they already know that? Okay, so you need to find this out do some kind of formative or diagnostic assessments, okay, with your students. I would do this at the beginning of a unit, for example, uh, and if you're about to start a new topic within the unit, do it again, check that they've got it. And if something is flowing, if something is going from, I've just taught this, and now we're about to teach this topic, but if they haven't understood the original topic, they can't actually get the new bit, right? So I've, I've just taught, uh, something about force, and now we're going to go into more detail about Newton's uh, laws, for example. Uh, if the, You want to check that the students actually have done that learning. So formative assessment is really key there for knowing if they're ready to move on, okay? Making sure they've grasped the basics before you move them on into deeper thinking. 
another thing. So do they already know what they need, that prior knowledge, for the new information you're about to teach them? If they don't, you then need to get them to know that, okay? You also might wanna find out what else your students might know that you can connect with, okay? So let's say they don't know force, but they do understand something about acceleration and cars, and they're really into cars, right? Uh, and they've seen measurements of force in when they're looking about engines, but they don't quite understand what that means. And so you can then pull on that information that they've already got to then teach them the new stuff, okay? So even if they don't have the prior knowledge you've identified, you would identify where are they at in relation to this understanding that I'm trying to get them to. Next, you wanna think of how can you help them to connect their prior knowledge that they already have with the new stuff that you are going to be giving them, okay? Your job is to help students to build on their current knowledge in order to learn the new knowledge, right? To order to learn, move into this new space, this new topic. So you wanna try and make the connections really explicit, okay? So when I'm talking about energy systems and ATP, I can talk about the explicit connections between all the energy systems that are all producing ATP, they all produce it at particular rates, they recover at particular rates, and the connections can be seen in the, in the process when, I'm, when I go through and talk about, you know, we're gonna expire on this one and it's gonna start to recuperate, but in order for it to recuperate, this other system has to be providing that ATP for this one to replenish. Uh, so there's lots of things that I can go into there, uh, or maybe it's with, with reading, I'm gonna make things explicit, right? We're gonna be learning the difference between th and th today, all right? So then I'm gonna to start to identify words that they are using, so the or thing, and we're gonna talk about fingers, right? And we're gonna just make it really clear distinctions and then lead into the words that are harder where students might more, be more likely to get them confused, right? Like uh, how to spell writing, for example, <laughs> is it the W, is it the R, or write, you know, which you've got issues there that you've gotta sort out common misunderstandings that are gonna come up. So you wanna make these connections explicit. So the new information that's coming, clearly connect it with the old, okay? Make those connections as clear as possible. Next, you wanna look at the information you're presenting to your students and think, does some of this information actually really clearly relate to each other? Like, can I chunk it together in how I teach it so that the kids are getting all this related and connected information at once and they can kind of then see that as one kind of unit that they're connecting with something they already know? Uh, or is there stuff that I need to look when I'm looking at the new content? Do I need to structure it in a way where the students are getting, it's gonna build upon itself, you know, so they're gonna get the new foundation bit and then they're gonna get the bit just beyond that and then a bit beyond that. And so I might start by saying, all right, there's two different types of energy systems. There's aerobic energy systems and there's anaerobic energy systems. Okay, now let's build upon that. What are the aerobic energy system? What does it do? Some examples around that, connecting it into types of training maybe, and aerobic training, and all those types of things. And then I'll do the anaerobic, and there's a connection there, because the an, that's before aerobic, is you know, without oxygen now. And so now I'm gonna break that down further and talk about those processes. So can you chunk that knowledge together for them? Next, you wanna see if you can help the students to see the organization, the structure and the meaning in what they're learning. So is the information I give them, yeah, you know, in the syllabus it might look to you like it's kind of structured, but can you clearly structure and organize it and show the meaning really clearly to your students so that it's easier for them to learn it? Okay, maybe you're gonna provide an overview, right? If you give a student an overview of a topic before you then go into it in detail, it actually automatically helps them to organize and structure that content because it works as an advanced organizer for them as they go into learning it. They go, okay, I've got to put this into these structures, right? So I might start by saying there's aerobic and anaerobic. And so some aerobic things go in here and anaerobic things go in here. And we're going to segregate. There's a big overview. There's a handout for that. And there's like these topics, headliners. So, okay, as a learning stuff, they go underneath those topics, those headlines. Uh, and that helps your students to structure it, which then helps them to learn it and also helps them to connect it with their prior knowledge, okay? Particularly if you're making those connections explicit between the prior knowledge and the new knowledge.
When it comes to the lifelong learning aspect of you know, the importance of prior knowledge, what you want to do is make sure that you actually teach this to your students. Teach them explicitly that they need to be thinking about their prior knowledge as they're learning new knowledge. So if they learn something new or there's new information coming, they need to be thinking in their brain, how does this connect with something else I already know? Can I find connections here? Okay, and that can help your students to learn that information. And so they're developing that skill that's then required for life that when they're learning something, they go, oh, I can connect that with this and that helps it to become more rememberable. You want to teach them to purposely connect the new and the old and give them the skills for future learning because as they come into the future, whatever it is they're going to learn, there might be some problem that's put before them, they can go, okay, this is new, but I have this knowledge that I can connect to that and that will help me to learn stuff or I have this skill in my background that might help me to solve this problem and so I can start to follow on that, do some research and adjust my process for solving that problem that might help me now. So we're really looking at developing that skill of learning in your students as they move forward to help them to become lifelong learners. Well, that's it for this episode. If you liked it, please click the subscribe button. Make sure that you leave a review if you're in a good mood and please head over to teacherspd.net slash 79 if you wanna grab a copy of the show notes or see the transcript. Uh, I hope you will then come back next week and join me as I look into how frameworks can impact learning.